into that kind of time so of course because we're alive i've i've said hi to you but again darren thank you very much for being part of the show and of course we've had a conversation as part of the symposium on colonization decolonization but we take it from there it's now about darren it's about no topic nothing it's about darren only so darren hey, about gosh. yourself and please what would you want to tell what, us about what, yourself what would i like um can i tell you about myself um i'm a husband and father um two children as um and apologies for anyone watching this on youtube you might see my hair going i'm outside on our deck and it's a little bit windy but we've got um music practice going on in the background and it's at various levels of skill so i don't want to put anybody unnecessarily through that so that's why you've got my hair flapping around um so my um children they're turning six and eight next week which is exciting um and i'm from originally from london living in auckland new zealand um where my wife's from um and my mum uh, and stepdad are in new zealand at the moment they um get to auckland on sunday so we're all very excited we've got a, a short holiday coming up um and we're we're at the tail end of the summer holidays school summer holidays here so i've pretty much <clears throat> had about five weeks off with um with my kids at the moment which has been great um a um, little bit, a little bit about me. I was a, a practicing litigator in London, um, and moved to Auckland about six years ago. Um, and we, before I, I left London, mediation was it was um, part of the legal landscape, but it was, but it wasn't. It was, it was you, you had to go through mediation in many civil and commercial disputes, but it was kind of almost just. Um, suppose a tick box exercise it wasn't really embraced uh, in the UK um, and then coming here um, I'd always sort of liked the idea of mediation even as a lawyer you know it really challenged me I think as a lawyer um, going from sort of rolling up your sleeves filing a corner for someone to getting into quite a different headspace for negotiating to settling um, and not sort of going backwards and forwards on the telephone with your opposite number you know being in a room together um, and you know separating out during the day um, and it kind of piqued my interest as a career. Um, so I did some training when I got here. Um, and I, I started off by doing a five day <clears throat> intensive uh, course. And I think I got about an hour into it. And I was like, wow, this, this, you know, just, you know, just something just grabs you, whether it's an activity or a human being. And I was like, wow, this, I, I just, we started off with a, a bit of theory and then we got into a practical. Um, and I just thought to myself, well, this, I, I'm going to enjoy this. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed each five day, um, of the course, made sort of detailed notes on the way home every night of just, you know, what I'd learned. Um, and after the five days were up, just sort of had a really big think about mediation generally. Um, and I, I, I've got a few uh, friends in the legal, um, world here and I've spoken to them a little bit about. A couple of them were uh, lawyers in London as well, just about how the landscape is in New Zealand uh, compared to back at home. And it's really, um, ADR generally is really embraced in New Zealand. Um, I think a lot of that to do is it's a really small population, around 5 million. And I think if you've, you kind of, if you, you can lose a reputation pretty quickly here, I'd imagine kind of need to get on because there's just not enough people not to get on with people and the lawyers are really behind um, alternative dispute resolution here they're really pro it so that's you know you've got the big gatekeepers um and the judges as well uh, big um big on adr um so that all really encouraged me um and i just haven't looked look back i've i've been practicing for about five and a half years um typically mediate anywhere between sort of two to five times a week um like you know when we're up and running fully in the year um in a, in a variety of types um i what do i do um some commercial work employment uh, um employment um relations um parents have separated um neighbor disputes um wills and trusts um and, and so sort of like a mixed bag, I don't sort of focus on one area that New Zealand hasn't really, it's very, it's probably only a couple of people who here with all their contacts and experience who, who 
sort of have got a really uh, focused practice area. Most mediators have a, a bit of a variety, uh, just because there's just not, you know, there's just not enough work to keep you in one area. And I quite enjoy that sort of, you know, jumping in and out um, and just thinking, and just in my practice, just thinking, thinking about, <clears throat> You know, the, the different ways that you work in the different areas where they work, might work in one place where they don't work in another, um, different strategies. So I, I kind of like that as, as I did as a legal practitioner where you, I worked in a, a number of areas of law. So you always kind of, I suppose, kept on your toes as a practitioner. Um, yeah. Um, so well, I think, about me. Because I think the first thing that you said about being a lawyer and the aspect of being a mediator, I thought that that was the way lawyers should have been. You had, <clears throat> should have had that whole approach even when you're practicing as a lawyer in general. I mean, this should have been part of mm. our practice. Should have been part of our practice. I mean, that's been part of my practice. I'm telling you right from the beginning. Mm. That was the whole idea that if someone comes to you, the, how can you actually resolve that for them? And reaching out to the other side as a lawyer, not, I mean, this word mediation and mediator obviously has become that technical word. But I think that's the approach. It's an approach to life in general. And mm. I think the, the legal profession also, I think that's that should have been our approach. I don't know where, where, did we start like that? And did we go wrong? Because we have this quotation by Mahatma Gandhi, which I, of course, I put on my website also, about how practicing like that has actually not been something contradictory to the practice of law. I don't know what your thoughts yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's quite right. Um, I mean, when you do negotiation um, in in your legal in your legal training, um, I remember talking to this lawyer in in New Zealand once, um, and I think we were at a, a some sort of seminar, <clears throat> and he was saying to me that I think it was in the in his final year at, at law school and university. I don't know which university he was in New Zealand, but he said um, they'd done you know done all of their practice, and then they got um, getting you know the getting CS book, and they spent not very long. On negotiation and the lecturer said to, said to all of the students something like well look you know everything you've learned over the last two and a bit years um i'm going to tell you now that 95 percent of all cases settle and he, we were just we were talking about over dinner um afterwards about well why is it more of the course actually about negotiation i know you need to have the legal basis to you know to buy the claim and know what claim, kind of claim you're bringing but if actually if 95 percent of cases settle actually that should be a big part of the course not kind of almost an after afterthought really um and i i remember as a practitioner back at home the last um two firms i worked for um when people used to come to me and say look um darren i want to sue this person um this is the issue i would always say to them look um <clears throat> The best advice that I can give to you um, is is this: is that if if we go into litigation, this is how much it's probably going to cost you. Uh, you know, it costs quite a lot of money to litigate, as we all know. This is the time commitment I'm going to need for you over from you over the next eighteen months. Um, you know, can you put aside that time from your life, from your work, uh, your business, whatever it may be? Um, and then I'm going to need you for a two or three week trial, and I'm going to need you in my office a couple of weeks before that because we need to go for all the evidence and get really well prepared. Um, my advice to them was, I suggest you go to the, go to a really nice wine shop and buy a nice expensive bottle of wine and go and take it to this person and sit down the table and see what you can thrash out. And if that doesn't work, come back and see me. Um, I, I, exactly. I, yeah. That's the approach. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's an approach thing, how you approach the practice. And I, I think, I don't know when did we, did it become adversarial at some point of time, the way the pro profession was pushed through, move, through. I think maybe Hollywood also has a role to play in that. <laughs> maybe it's a <laughs> yeah, possibly. courtroom <laughs> drama and everything is very attractive mm. to people. So I, I don't know where it all began. Did it Was it not like this at some point of time? Did it go into that direction? I don't know. It just, I think we just pick up something and it goes into a certain direction and everyone follows it because that's the expectation from it, maybe. I don't know. I, yeah, maybe. you're right. It's like a victim of its own success, right? Because um, I know certainly back at home in England, um, so like in the high court, um, there was, you know, lots of people would come from all over the world to sue in, in London because of, you know, the, the historic legal system and it's safe and, um, you know, great precedent judges who couldn't be bribed 
you know, good quality law firms. And you'd have, you know, you know, celebrities, billionaires from all over the all over the globe coming to litigate there. And it's become um a bit of a yeah, you know, a litigation hub. Um the government has back at home probably throughout the last fifteen years has been heavily increasing the um issue fees um so that ordinary people find it hard to litigate and what they I think what I think what policy has been there for quite a while is actually just one very rich people lit- litigating there because they're bringing a lot of money um to the law firms, cluster hotels, casinos, restaurants when they're over. And it's it's, you know, it's, it's good standing for the country, right? Um so I think there's also a, a policy movement behind litigation as well, Vic from certainly from what I've seen anyway. I'm just looking at it from the fact that you gave us the British gave us, you gave us a certain procedural thing, which of course you obviously may have, I don't know whether you've streamlined it, but we followed what you gave us and we have a civil yeah. procedure code, which is 1908. We, we got independence in <laughs> 1947. So you gave us all that. You have the same, I don't know whether you have the same, same procedure, that whole code, which it applies to your courts or not, but it created this whole web of, of course, I mean, you've got time, the cost, the whole procedural thing, everything that we got mm. from there. I think that's something which I feel that uh, the, the lawyers have taken advantage of. And and if it's stuck in that whole mold, which I don't think is changing very soon. But I, I'm just happy that the fact that you did consider looking at mediation as a separate thing. I'm saying it's obviously part of the practice. It should have been part of practice. Yeah. but. Mm. Mm. But, th- but this five-day thing that you said, Darren wasn't made a mediator in those five days. Let me assure you. <laughs> no, 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 of course. And, and that was just the tip of the iceberg. But it certainly, it kind of just grabbed me, you know, the whole idea of being able to hold a space of conflict between two or more people um, and keep a conversation going that was rational, that um, looked at, solutions and you know and we talk about this all the time as mediators don't make solutions that you can't get through the court system um you know what what, what other things can possibly be on the table other than the, the dispute as it were um and ultimately it's about human beings and relationships right um and i just really i think i, I think for me that's what really um which really grabbed my attention was what you're what you're doing is you're helping people de-escalate and actually getting them into a place where they can have some kind of relationship, whether it's a, a friend, a family member, a business associate, whatever it is, um, commercial, you know, commercial entities. Um, it's actually about that. And I just, I, or I remember talking to my wife about, you know, it's a big decision, right? Move, changing careers, um, <clears throat> about, about it all. And, you know, one of the things that I remember saying to her, my wife, Ella, clearly was, um, what I liked, I think what I liked most about it was that for a short space of time, you're in these people's lives and you can make a really positive difference, just so profound compared to the difference you made as a, as a legal practitioner, um, at, you know, in a shorter space of time. Um, yeah, and certainly you're not a mediator after five days, you know, you're constantly kind of feel like a fraud sometimes now i haven't only been a mediator for five and a half years you know you're constantly striving to improve um you know reflecting in your practice that you know what's got gone right and wrong each day um to try and make yourself a better mediator for the people who are going to knock on your death door next right but i just think Darren, to even say that you've been a mediator five and a half years i won't accept that you've you've had the mindset forever yeah, it yeah. Just, the, it just, the, the label i suppose yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah. just a label put there i think it's that i mean f- those five days that you spent something clicked inside that this is what i am this is what i enjoy doing this is me mm-hmm. you just found yourself yeah. i just think that is finding yourself but the the seed definitely has been there and it's been growing and it'll keep growing that evolution of a mediator series of mine that's what it's all about <clears throat> that's yeah tree will keep growing but the seed it has is there now. Why is it there, or how it develops over time? What happens? I mean, that's another whole. I mean, discussion we'll have to keep have, have, having on this. But I think the fact that you were at least, I mean, you found what you were all about. I think that's 
something which I feel that uh, I mean, people, how do they do it? Because these sh shows and everything, the I, this was one of the whole, the idea behind it is let it go out there. It clicks with someone who really feels this is me. Mm. This is what I want to do. My job done. Okay, then after that, they find their way and they use it in their lives. Or as a, as a, I mean, I would want them to practice that. So we have to create that atmosphere, which definitely is an issue globally that have mediators been able to practice full time or not. That's a whole mm. area that we have to work on. But I think the good thing is that you're doing various kinds of things. I mean, that fact that obviously there's a discussion on process and domain expertise I just feel that this domain expertise, I, I think that's a discussion which I feel has come from the legal profession. I mean, this is not... Oh, completely. Yeah, com completely. Yeah. I agree. I, I remember talking to some... There was a lawyer I was talking to at the end of last year. So I'm... Uh, <clears throat> the um, one, There are two sort of associations here in New Zealand and I'm a, I'm a member of one. Um, and I also help them by assessing essential members, members, membership applications um, and some recommendations for our council. Um, and they have had referees. Um, there's a, a lawyer who had applied and I was talking to one of his referees. And I think he was, um, was trust, trust law from memory. And we were just talking about mediation just generally, having a nice chat. And he said something to me like, oh, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't instruct a mediator who did family work to do a trust matter and i think there's there is definitely this whole aspect of lawyers putting people into boxes um because i was thinking to myself well i do both of those roles quite comfortably um and and then he asked me what i did and i told him and he went oh oh you do that and he said ah oh. and it was just like a, a little bit of an awakening for him that you know just what he thought was a, the way you know the way it was done um, just was sort of undone very quickly. Um, but I think, um, yeah, as lawyers, we get very comfortable in keeping things in in an order, keeping people pigeonholed in certain places. Um, well, I think maybe that's also... I think you're right. I think, I think there's a lack of understanding maybe of the process itself. What are you really doing there? And look, I also know, we also ourselves don't know what people are doing in mediation because that's obviously not out there in public domain as to mm. what really happens inside. And do are they using just the domain expertise to take it in a certain direction or are they, I mean, is it something where you're connecting people, you're going deeper into them rather than the subject matter that which is there? I think those two mm. things, I think people will... I don't know whether we can ever actually, with the way mediation is developing through the court system, will people be able to look at it as totally a different method of dispute resolution? Which you've heard, I know you've heard me say that in that particular symposium also, and you hear it all so many mm -hmm. times. I mean, just the fact that it is totally out of this court system. It's a different form of dispute resolution. Please don't connect the two. And only then will people recognize what it is by itself. I think somewhere down the line yeah. that has to happen. And then this whole discussion on the domain and all that expertise, I think, will have to go away. I mean, if we have to really develop it at the grassroots level, which of course we're going to discuss on that. But yeah. Mm. Because I just feel Yeah, like no, I think I, th I think I think you're quite right. I think there's um Sort of just going back to those to that label um, situation, right? And yeah, you, you are what you are, and you, you know, we across the globe, lots of us helping people to resolve all kinds of disputes day to day. Yeah. I don't consider myself to be a mediator in any particular area um, at all. Um, whereas I probably did do that when I was practicing law. I would say, you know, people would ask me, I'd say, well, these are the areas that I practice in. So I suppose that you know more of a sort of a distinct role, perhaps. Yeah, because I mean, just the fact that if you need, you can always get a domain expert. And why should that domain expert only be a legal practitioner? This the way the legal profession and has to has tried to take over dispute resolution. That everything, whenever dispute resolution happens, we have to be there. The law is mm. not the only aspect that happens in disputes. There's so many other things that happen in disputes, and so many other people who have to be involved. The law part of it, when it's required, 
yes, you can come in, but why should it have to come in? If two reasonable people are sitting together and having a reasonable discussion to resolve their disputes, that by itself, at the end of the day, should be in the whole rather la the larger law that we have created. It's to be part of mm -hmm. that because reason, that's what reasonable people, people do. Who creates the law? We expect them to be reasonable people sitting together and discussing something and creating a law. And if we, I mean, people sit together, at the end of the day, that will, that should be part of what the legal structure is. And if it doesn't, I keep saying, then challenge that law. If in any way, if reasonable people can't come to a certain reasonable agreement, it, I yeah. mean, if they understand it to be reasonable and fair, that law should support it. So actually, should lawyers really be required in that? And for the fact that you need so many other experts, bring them in when they're required. I mean, I see no reason why this, of course, like I said, courts and lawyers have been associated with dispute resolution. We have to break that, Darren. How are you going to do that? How am I going to do that? A hard one. I mean, certainly, like here in, in, in Auckland, a large majority of mediators are also practicing lawyers. Um, so they sort of do a dual role. Um, there probably aren't that many people here. Just trying to think of like the, the, the people who I know who practice. Um, I mean, I would say people that I know, I would say it's definitely less than 50% of the mediators who I know who are, who, who are only practice mediation. Um, I'd say the, the large majority of them, um, are lawyers who are arbitrators at the same time. Um, that's quite a small group of individuals here who, who just do that. That's, that's a bit of a bit of a hard task. I think one of certainly one of the things that I've realised here is that certainly there's a, a number of air, what I'm going to describe label as areas of mediation. So that's the areas of law rather than the, the areas of mediation, and they kind of they're quite protected by um, a group of um, uh, group of lawyer mediators. Um, there's, there's, you know, and I understand why there's, there's not that much of that type of work here. And they're just very, they're very protective of it. Um, and there's a lot of, I, I don't see like a lot of like cross referring things like that. So in, in order to break into that, I've been trying victim. I've used a few tactics. Um, so a couple of things that I've done is that there's a, a couple of companies who do continuing education for lawyers. And so I sometimes do talk to, for them. Um, and, you know, it's generally for junior lawyers. Um, and the, what I talk to them about is um, the way that they can approach mediation and the preparation that they can do to get really good outcomes for their clients. Um, so one, you're giving them uh, billable hours um, to do before mediation, but also you're really preparing them and preparing their client for, for mediation um, in the hope that in five, six, seven years' time when they come to get to do who the mediator is they might remember me um and secondly and then sort of trying to take that talk into into law firms for for the newly qualified lawyers you know going and do a free long time talk um i've i've i've, I've offered a, a number of law firms here at uh, that opportunity no one's kindly taken me up on it yet um and it's hard it's hard um you know how do you break that down it's a big question um and it's a big bit of work. It's hard to do on your own. I suspect probably what it would need is something like all of the people who I know and others who their, their sort of only source of income is mediation is actually, actually possibly to form some sort of collective and then come together. And that's like the mediation centre, as it were, in, in Auckland or you know, Wellington or where, wherever it is in New Zealand or maybe nationwide. Um and then we can sort of collectively pull our scores, our, our skills, resources, time um, to try to break that down. It'd be hard for one person to do that on their own. So, so basically, you're going towards my mediation circles and creating those mediation circles, which is what I will talk to. But there is Adnan, who's on those from Sri Lanka. He's made a comment, which, of course, is something which I've always spoken about, which I have an issue with. He says in Sri Lanka, we train the school pupils how to do mediation between students too and this is where i have an issue that you train everyone talks about training 
I mean, no one is yeah. talking about that natural ability to bring it out and create an atmosphere, which is what these circles, which I, why am I talking about these circles? Because these people exist. Create that circle around these people and the children already know these children and they have actually benefited from them also. It's all happening there. It's just yeah. this technical word which we are carrying around and we think we are bringing something to the world and to the community. They're bringing nothing to them. They already know everything about it. It's the people that we have to bring out, not bring in. I think this is also something we have to be able to tell people. Only then will you connect them to the process the way I want it. And yeah. I'm sure, Darren, you also have the same thoughts on it. The way we want to connect them to the process, the, the fact that the human touch the relationships and all those things. There's so many other things which go into it. And it's, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to now talk about the way what happens in the courts and it's all about settlements and a gun on your head kind of settlements. But this side, we bring these people out. So if, I mean, if Adan is still listening, I mean, Adan, the whole concept being that let us not keep saying that we are going to teach people this. If we could have taught people this, we would have changed the world by now. <laughs> we don't think we've been able to do that. There is no such little pill that we have if created somewhere in some box somewhere and we are throwing it out. But that, that, that's what the other, that's another, I mean, look, the problem is that I, I've spoken so much about it. I just feel I keep repeating it all the time. But I, I just feel that there's this box which went around the world. Someone sat somewhere and where did it come from? What society did it come from? What Who thought about the individual, what is an individualistic approach to life in general? And that came into the mediation world. I think, and I'm just saying that that, that exists because fighting against something which is there and has been there and people have spoken about it and made lots of money around that training that they did. And that's the only place I think where the money really is being made and the mediators themselves are not getting work out of that. I, I don't know whether I told you. There was Andrew Miller in my, my symposium in uh, 2021 and he said the 18,000 certified accredited mediators in the UK and only 500 I've worked. Uh, when I heard that, uh, I was like, wow, that's actually a wow situation that you've uh, taken, put them through all this. And at the end of the day, there is no, and you've sold a dream to them. I've seen these, whatever little flyers and all that they put out, they sell a dream to them. Oh, mediation is going now, Singapore Convention, international and everything. You've got this whole mediation career and every all that happening, but never tell them the ground realities. And that's yeah. But, but that's like, for me, I mean, that, that's so much of that. So I've done on this side, the positives, Darren, the whole idea behind this, these mediation circles is just this. Let's just go out and tell the people that this is something that you've done, you are doing. Let's just create a structure around it. And to those people who have that mindset to actually resolve disputes like that, let's bring them into that circle. The Peacemakers and the mediators, I've tried to differentiate between the two. I'm just saying that some people believe that just bringing people together by itself when they talk about the whole mediation, I mean, when they go out and to tell communities, sometimes that skill of the mediator and actually pushing that part sometimes gets, gets lost. So I think that the yeah. mediator and peacemaker, I want to differentiate for that reason, that a peacemaker is required to bring people together and a mediator skill is required. And I keep saying that, look, first of all, why do you need someone else? You can do it yourself. Then a peacemaker to bring you together after that, you can do it yourself. Then there is a stage yeah. of the mediator coming in. Okay. So these are stages which I want to bring out so your thoughts on the mediation circles any thoughts on that and how do we take it forward in new zealand and the world how do we take it forward um i think with any any sort of concept right you've got to there's got to be an an, an attractive outcome for people right so i suppose you for me i you would want to start with well if someone was going, to, if someone approached me to joining a circle, instinctively, I'm I'm going to ask myself a few questions. Right, one is, you know, what have I got to put into this, and two, what am I going to get out of it? So I suppose you need to know the answer to those two things. Um, you know, what are you, what are you aiming for? Um, 
I suppose every jurisdiction will be slightly different in terms of what you want out of it. There'll be some common threads, I'm sure. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know about you and your colleagues in India. I've spoken to a few of your colleagues in India um, and yourself a, a number of times. It seems to be a common thread amongst mediators that, that they're generally a nice bunch of people. So <laughs> there's, 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 there's that going for it in terms of if there was an opportunity to be able to do more on you know do what we're doing on a bigger scale i'd imagine a lot of people that who i know um in auckland that they would be keen and eager to join um but yeah that's a good question i think i think you probably i'd i probably need to think about that a bit longer and maybe speak to my colleagues about what would be you know what would be the goal of, of doing this that certainly sort of locally anyway um no, I'll give my There's thoughts. a number of things that jump out of yeah, okay, far away. Yeah, no, I I'll give you my thoughts on what you said. How, what do I put in and what do I get out? I think that's something which definitely is uh, anyone would ask that. So how why why I want to create a structure first of all is that the mediator needs to be remunerated first of all. This whole free thing which mm -hmm. is going around and then connection with free is an issue. So how does it, I mean, what is it that the mediator is going to get out of it? Mediator and the peacemakers and everything. So I said, let's create it like a multi-level marketing structure. So Darren is, there is this New Zealand mediation circle that Darren is part of it. And then he goes and brings certain mediators as part of it and we peacemakers as part of it. So he's actually getting something from them for them to be part of it because it's that that this is his thing that he's creating. And then those people get other people into it, which is of course the participants and the mediators and peacemakers because it depends on the size of the country. I mean, of course, you're still a smaller country, but still you, big enough for that chain to go out two, three layers easily. Here, of course, India is huge. Then obviously with that, there might be various levels which need to be created. So it's a level, multi-level marketing is of various levels. So you are getting something from them. Of course, you are going to give something to the world mediation circle. So it works like that. So mm. everyone gets something out of it to bring people into the circle, first of all. The other thing is you're available to those communities as someone who comes in as a practicing mediator we want all those mediators out there to be practicing mediators, but a lot of them yeah. are just are just doing it. I mean, within families or communities or schools, they're just doing it. So we want them to come into that whole fold of practicing mediators. So you are available to them with your experience that, that okay, you go in, maybe you can have conversations with them. I don't want to ever say training of mediators because I feel that's in a way disrespecting them because it's like telling them we are going to put something in you. Or we are going to create a mediator kind of thing. So we yeah. are not doing that. But yes, skill development, why not? There'll be skill yeah. development. Yeah. I've tried to put all this free content. Okay, people can benefit from it. But otherwise, you are there. You were, you were, maybe you could have skill development sessions in which you can get paid. You can charge for it. I mean, that's your situation, how you want to do it. But first thing, the important thing is that you are now being recognized as someone who's coming in to create something. Rather than coming and saying, oh, I, I, I'm a mediator, give me work. No, I mean, that's, this is more of a connection with people. So they, I mean, mm -hmm. of course, interact with you because disputes are very personal things to people and they need that trust. And how does that trust get generated? Only with their interaction with you. And they say, yes, are we, can I we actually relate to Darren? Let's talk to him about it. So in the community, you are recognize as someone with that kind of mindset. And because yeah. of that, work comes to you because they're interacting with them. Similarly, the other people that you bring in into the circle, for them also to be recognized because you'll have your fees, which might be different from the fees for other people. So they can decide whom they want to go to. They can bring you in only for certain part of the mediation. I think the way the mediation has been structured, I, of course, don't practice it in that way. For me, it is a senior mediator comes in when is required the other person does it for the, they can have discussions otherwise so there's a i mean there is a certain like i like you we have senior councils i don't know how your structure of the queen's council and now the king's council how that works here we have senior councils who you would go brief for matters in court but it's not that everything happens with them 
they are briefed at a certain point and then they argue in the courts so it's not that you have to bring them in every discussion so th- that similar structure i'm i have created for mediation also so they come to you for certain aspects they're doing it at their level so they you for the participants which i've called, i call them participants not mm. parties you heard that part that this parties thing has also come from the whole from the, legal, court system. the court system <laughs> so yeah. participants so they are also i mean you have to look at their fee structure also so that's the kind of thing that you benefit from the idea is to for, mm. it's, it's a structure where everyone benefits it's not we're not doing going out and just saying that oh we are promoting mediation what is med- promoting mediation it's just one sentence the what is mediation simple i mean if people have tried yeah. to complicate it in people's mind it's simple what I means any, any the whatever name it's called however the process is done where someone is in uh, assisting people to resolve their disputes but doesn't have the authority to impose a solution as simple as that i don't know why we have to create mm. this whole rocket science thing in people's mind <laughs> so, so, so that's the thought behind it and then because all this is part of the larger world mediation circle so all these people who are, right now you've obviously got free content lying there but now they'll come in for only the people who are part of these circles so we'll have sessions with everyone who's part of the circle they can i mean various topics we'll discuss it now within the circle because there is enough content for people to watch for the last, next two years maybe i mean there i think there must be 6 700 hours of content there so let people do that but still okay things will still go on to youtube it's not that things won't go on to youtube there are lots of things which are coming up so th- this is the thought behind it i mean after listening to this is there something that you feel that I mean, your suggestions your i mean you look yeah at yeah i i i, I, I th- yeah I, yeah a number of sort of things are running through my head with you talking there um and so there's something that you know really stuck in my mind was um when uh, on a, a number of occasions um over the last few years um a fellow practitioner who you know kind of knew knew in the mediation has called me up and i know they you know this in my part of our association we have this um you know like you can phone a friend or a peer uh kind of a, an approach so there are people that you can go and you can call um just to ask for advice um and i i probably get called i don't know maybe about half a dozen or so times a year and i could really see actually that would be a really good benefit of um someone who calls you up and says that i'm working with these uh, people um this is dynamic you know they ask you for some advice and i can really see the benefit of um sort of doing some home mediation even as you say even if it was for a small part like for maybe an hour or for two of it and then you know once you've got them to a a really good space you can say right well, actually now I'm going to leave and I'm going to leave you uh, with whoever you know but be available on the phone perhaps if needed um you know for for a five minute chat um, to your co-mediator I could I could see that being a, a really really good system um and I I suspect a lot of people who when they're starting out would really really like that and I think also from experience I don't want to call myself and you know experience mediators compared to some of my colleagues here um but they would they would really enjoy sort of giving that back to you know that those people who are starting out in their careers in mediation as well yeah. um and I can see that the piece the you know the participants would benefit hugely from it as well you've got someone who can you know get the get the rules in motion for them get them into a space that's good um and then they've got the person who they've chosen to work with um you know to, to to run through with them yeah so i i i exactly try, try i'm trying trying to find um not intentionally i'm just trying to think oh is there anything that jumps out at me that uh on the negative and i i can't well, no, what you said I, I think i think i i think it's got some really good legs on it bit from so this is i mean i'm telling you that this is I, this is something that people will also connect to because let's look at mediation the way people understand it as part of their lives they have elders they have, they had elders whom they would go to maybe they've stopped doing yep. that in communities and <laughs> the structure of communities and families might have changed because of the way 
or whatever, however we've restructured communities, which of course, I'm going to talk about that aspect to you also. But this is something that they're familiar with. Let's go to this person. Let's talk to this person, whoever might be a certain elder, but you don't have to, I mean, they'll give you a certain pathway maybe, but then you discuss it. So that balance between the two, that wisdom plus, plus maybe the way, of course, mm. the certain practical aspects that you want to consider, whatever. I mean, I'm not just saying that there is, has to be any formula there because it's the, it's going to be very, it's going to have, we happen very organically how it happens. There's no way that we can say in every situation this will happen. But the fact that mm. these people have been there in communities and all, which were consulted, let's just say consulted because like I said, we, yeah. we're using words like mediation, but I mean, it could be a process how people understand it. It's up to them. So maybe it's just a consultation to give a certain direction or maybe for the first, the attempt is just, okay, sit together kind of thing. Okay, sit together, mm. and try and do it. And like I keep saying that that should be the first approach. So just bringing people together, maybe just that one conversation can actually take it into a certain direction. So you, if you even... I mean, it's just an online thing. I, I, I mean, I have practiced, of course, totally online. Sometimes you just need that five-minute conversation. Sometimes it don't. Yeah. Not even. I mean, we, we hold this structure that has been created. That okay, we'll have we'll book so much time, and we'll all come together in a space. And okay, in the whole day, we have to thrash it out and finish it. You know, let's not do this to people. They have it's let it happen the way it, they were comfortable with, and and it's mm. not. We don't have to push them into these kind of things. I mean, that is, these are, are these. This is really the mediation I want to promote, not at all. Okay, settlement conferences, if you want to call them, call them that. And okay, that's time factor. Gun on your head. The court will cost you so much, and this will be the time factor. So <laughs> settle. Those things have to go away. I mean, we have to. That's where the yeah. development of that, I, I, that whole environment around it. But I think that the other thing that also needs to be done is that maybe you'll have the, I mean, responsibility to actually create communities. Maybe communities themselves are broken up. So I think that also will be a role of mediators, and of course, peacemakers. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I, yeah, just modern, uh, modern, even labor, modern way of living. Um, I, you, know, you can see that um, communities aren't probably what they were 50 years ago, right? Um, you know, all around the globe. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I touched on this when we spoke um, last week when you were um, talking to my wife about something quite different. Um, uh, this guy who approached me is a really, really interesting guy who's an artist and he um, finds interesting, I'm going to call them you know, artifacts or street treasure um, all, all over the city and he and he turns them into really, really nice things to look at. Um, so it might be a plank of wood and he'll paint, you know, the, the mount, the, the uh, volcano that you can see across the uh, harbour in Auckland on it. Um, and he's got a small shop, it's, I don't know, three metres by three metres. And... Um, He's really big on community, so he's set up a food bank um, outside of his shop, and he's got a giant worm farm. He gives worms away to people that want it, and he's out of wooden crates. He's set up a, a, a game of chess, and he's made the chess pieces. Unfortunately, he's, a few of the chess pieces have gone missing, and he's spent quite a bit of time remaking them, and have now gone from these quite intricate and ornate things to now just blocks of wood with a painting of a king or a queen on it um but a few but between him and his shop there's another shop that's a, uh, a grocery store fruit and vegetables mainly um and he wanted to and we had a chat um just about what he was doing there and he wanted to turn the area into a community area so um from food bank to um doing um you could bring your composting there um and 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 have some community events it's quite a big grass space where it's, it's kind of like almost like wasteland um and he's not getting on particularly well with his neighbours um around just the way that they dispose of their rubbish. Um and we were just talking about the opportunities for their food waste could be put into his food bank or into his worm farm and could feed the community. He had some really nice and interesting thoughts about what he could do um in this area from a community space that he kind of needed this these shop owners to be on board um because they're just you know they're there and they would play a bit of a part in it um and unfortunately he he didn't have the 
confident or whatever whatever it is to go and talk to them because he found it was quite a difficult conversation he was going to have with them um and maybe asking for some things from them um and he just didn't know how to have it um and so I'm, i've got to go back and see him very soon um, and sort of talk about how i might be able to help him have that conversation and again it's just going back to that you know that whole community how can we all help each other what can we do to bring communities back together again i mean this is just one man with not me i'm talking about this other guy i think he's got this whole shopping list of things he wants to achieve in this small area um but it sounds great if you know, i can i can vision what he's trying to achieve and it sounds great i think what what that would you have to value is the fact that what you can do to just have that conversation there's a value to that it's not just a conversation mm. the way you would approach it the way you would connect with people you bring that aspect of it so we have to value that part i think that is where that you know, not valuing yourself what you bring in that then creates this whole chain of okay let me just do this okay this is what comes to you it's a way of life that we've had i've had that discussion in that world mediators mm. conference on i mean is it a profession or is it a way of life it's just a way of life but that way of life needs to be remunerated and that value oh, quite, that you bring quite. in but but it mm. is this just what it is just a conversation that you will have now oh, how... no, no, i mean i, I mean I, i i mean i would have to think about how i'm going to get paid um firstly um he's got some really nice things in his shop and it's constantly changing exactly. um <laughs> and 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 the um and the and the and the grocery shop has some things in there that would look very nice in my kitchen as well exactly, exactly. it would be a so, barter yeah, system so, Yeah, absolutely but let's right. go back to bar- get, back, get back to the barter system perfectly all right yeah. the fact is it's not about just about the cash part of it it's just being remunerated mm-hmm. because yeah. no one values free stuff i know because i put out all this on the youtube channel i have always mm. kept saying that okay but my idea was people who may not be able to afford so many senior people there those sessions of theirs privately people obviously have those sessions with say ken cloak hundreds of dollars people pay yeah. to attend those i said no let's open it out and ken of course has been so nice he wants to open it out but then i said okay send a gift at least because the time spent needs to should be sure. remunerated or compensated for mm. did not happen it did not happen so i'm saying free is not really appreciated so the, the, so yeah. what how you would one is of course this person gives you something from his shop that's one part but if you are creating that circle in that community so every participant who feels that they want to be part of this circle because they want to resolve things amicably in a collaborative manner they pay something to be part of that circle to you mm. so you've mm. got a certain we let's in a way it's a retainer <laughs> it's like a retainer but it's a small amount for everyone but it becomes something that of course you are now available for that conversation you don't have to think about it it's part of what you do because you are required i mean mm. it's required that the, the it's a, people should just be able to approach approach you and every time you can't be setting up a fee for that conversation maybe the two minute conversation maybe you can't put up a fee for it you yeah. can't so it's like a retainer for you from everyone in that community so darren is available darren we can talk to him darren can speak to so and so so darren is known for that part of it of connecting people so that's something that you get remunerated of course in specific things that need to be taken forward for the indiv- indiv- individuals how you fix it up barter or an amount you fix a fee for that which you normally do i mean which you would do maybe as a mediator also but here it might be things might might take less time of yours so how you do it so you get remunerated then and then of course these things about reaching out to people maybe you can do it some mediators may not want to do it they, so they have, you have the peacemakers to do that for you they go out yeah. they talk to people and they bring in in and say okay let's you let's go to so and so as a mediator but darren is someone is trusted by have has been trusted so let's use him as a mediator so they bring them to you so they get something for that from those people and from you maybe we create a structure i mean i'm also saying that this is these are thoughts in my head they, I, but i have a certain idea how it has to happen but on the ground how it has to work we keep discussing it but let's put it into place I mean, let's not i mean let's not think that there will be some perfect system we'll put into place it'll i mean develop as we go along we'll refine it as we go along people will give feedback how it has to happen when people say no we don't want to 
pay anything to be part of this circle so maybe that's not those are not the right people to talk to maybe precisely right? yeah whoever yeah. Uh, yeah you're right it's interesting to think about these new ways of working and to be to be remunerated right yeah. it doesn't just have to be person one and person two it can be spread out and make it exactly. uh, yeah much more affordable achievable and yeah yeah obtainable for people right and that's one part of remuneration the other thing is that if say, say a certain local government or the government in general wants to fund you because you're creating this nice thing around you let them do it maybe we can get sponsors also maybe mm. there are organizations who want to put put out there that they want communities to benefit from these activities and they want mediators to be available so they are giving so much i mean it can be on a national level it could be on a global level and everything goes out to various mediators we can i mean lots of things can happen there why should it not be mm. why should don't they have a i mean some kind of a responsibility towards communities all these organizations who function in countries don't they want they should should they not we have something called corporate social responsibility in india so there's so yeah. companies have to actually there's a certain amount of their profits which they have to they put have to into activities course. for the community i don't know mm. new zealand how if that works or not um so, no they, they don't have it here they have it, they, they have, they've had it in england for for a number of years um certainly the law firms i worked at used to um support things like planting trees and some of the, you know even some of the partners would go and some of some of the other lawyers would, would go and plant trees in various parts um in and around london you know once or twice a year um they, 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 they're, they're, I've, I've seen it um on a couple of companies websites here but it's not it's not a requirement here um but i i think my, my view is i i suspect it's it will start to become yeah, bigger because corporations have a responsibility right exactly and that should not need to be pushed into it by legislation it should be something that mm. comes from there so when you go there look planting trees is important but also creating a, a an environment when people can amicably resolve disputes is also required everything mm. is required it's not that it's everything is about the environment as in the natural environment is in the environment that you mm. create within people also so they they can be brought in for that it could be a small company or some maybe a small little organization in your local area and then I, like i said it could be the larger ones also okay, so we will bring them in i mean the, I mean, the finally what the whole idea is not just communities and disputes of the kind that we normally talk about issue based mm. issue based i mean yeah. what i'm doing is one global climate change mediation circle and then we'll go down to a media, a climate change mediation circle in your community because everything happens that happens in one community somewhere in one corner of the world affects some something else on the global level so we'll have those issue based ones so there will be people who would want to be part of that i mean it's a cause it's a cause that you want to but the difference being that these causes have been discussed it's not that these causes are not discussed but they are discussed in relation to activism advocacy mm. and of course politics around it this thing so what i am want i want to create a, an alternative to that this is a community who which discusses things they can actually have conversations around it reasonable conversations and there are people like darren who can actually coordinate these quad conversations so it's not just a mediation maybe sometimes maybe it's just yes. the role of a mediator but sometimes it might be a mediation there might be disputes there so so yeah. that also is something that people should understand is also a way to resolve things everything is not out on the street and holding banners everything is not that <laughs> definitely i find sometimes i feel that that is again of something that has come from the from colonization because this was not yeah. your government it was something that was thrown on you so you went out protested against it now these now you've gone into which so called democracies i don't even consider them democracies obviously because it's not a majority which is ruling the i mean i'm saying ruling who which governs there are very small mm. pockets i mean like i you i don't know whether you heard me saying that we have had this discussion a number of times about say in the in india 25% of all the votes in the country is what the ruling the government that we have has in the us only 33% of the entire votes of the country so biden yeah. biden only has 33% of the votes of the entire country but that's still called a democracy which how does that work i mean really is it really a democracy and all the issues that come with it 
so so but let's just put that aside i mean this politics and all and all that will keep happening but this alternative to resolving disputes and just getting communities together to have good conversations productive conversations mm. collaborative conversations you play a role in that i think that's the value that you bring in and communities have to value it and if they don't value it why should we keep doing it for them why should we i mean no no quite look and there's, there's a lot to be said isn't there for for helping to strengthen like community um that you know people in the community the strength of it um what it's doing for itself i mean this this one guy that i was talking to to you know this is just one person he's just got so many interesting ideas for a small a small bit of land and you know as i can imagine you know, as you go into bigger communities that that grows and grows and grows hopefully you've got lots of people like that who have got these great ideas as, as for you know like community gardens whatever it may be that you can help help um, sculpt i suppose through yeah. through good conversations that's what that's how the whole concept of mediation is coming up with creative solutions and of course mm-hmm. bringing people together and this the fact that you can create a safe space everything is all about that safe space that not everyone can create so so yeah. i think it's a, it's a very important value to communities to society in general which i think somewhere got lost and these people exist and they've existed they're all there but the mm-hmm. way i mean of course the way society developed the materialism in society the individualistic aspect of communities of society of mm. people all that happened over time and it changed the structure so maybe like i said that is also a role to bring that community together which you just said i mean you've spoken about this i think that's how it is so but i mean at this point of time maybe what we can do is we can <laughs> cut this session because like i said we should try and keep them shorter but look this conversation could i have kept it for 20 minutes it just it's just you know, a good conversation happening so i mean i had thought that this year is going to be shorter conversations out there so people watch it but i want this all this that we discussed out there if people can actually take it up in their areas look part of what i am doing someone wants to be part of the world mediation circle and the circles that i am creating i'm I was damn good but otherwise also i mean people can do it in their communities and create the structure so that at least some change happens i mean change has to happen right ground upwards and downwards both ways both ways is going to happen so so that and i mean of course it's a conversation though normally should not have concluding remarks of conversations but how do you want to ra- how do you want to wrap up the conversation oh how can we wrap up um interesting conversation with you as always um and i look forward to our ongoing discussions around you know community engagement and how we're getting with that in these circles um it's a really good idea um and these and also i think these um you know just like like the mediator collective whatever you want to call it just there's there's lots of really good opportunities for yeah just ongoing project um so we'll, I'll, I'll 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 keep you updated and we'll I'm sure we'll be having many discussions uh, yet to come and we'll Absolutely. see we'll just see where it takes us Absolutely the so conversations will con- continue but we have to put it in place first steps we just look it's just a step we'll start with first step let's see how it goes we'll grow as it goes it's a new concept that we're developing so we'll go where it yeah. has to so, so you, should, then, you should maybe think about at some point having a symposium on just how everyone's getting on yeah. so we could do a no, what we, all, sh- all sharing you know what, what's been working yeah. what's not how we're doing it no this year that's what's going to happen this year these all these conversations we'll we'll have to decide whether we want to put it out on youtube or not that we can decide whether we need to do that but mm. now it's going to be conversations of circles so it's going to be i i had thought of calling them conferences so we'll have a say i mean look new zealand mm. mediation circle is still <clears> a large <throat> circle but it can do, go down to that community that you are part of it can be we can have a conference of those people we we'll have to decide what to call it i mean i'm i'm still figuring out does conference sound too formal maybe we can have another word for it i mean that's not a problem i mean the symposium actually like i mean there was that mandy who was part of the of course i don't know whether you heard her session where she was talking about how what where symposium came from catherine also from greece that the word where the word symposium mm. came from it was just a, a, a informal space where people were 
putting out ideas so it can still continue at a symposium but we'll have local ones and there there'll be those that you will be uh, i mean organizing you know, as part of your circle there then we'll have the new zealand and the world mediation circle we'll have these conversations mm. or conferences or whatever we call them but this is this is what we're going to do now actual productive to do something discussions now now we've discussed various topics there are some topics coming up next month we have something on language and mediation so if you want to be part of that you can let me know so that's coming up in the sum of got talking books series that is a few of them are coming up and then for the on 24th february is when russia entered ukraine so on that date we'll just have a discussion with mediators from russia and ukraine on generally their experiences as because of this right. and how they how they they themselves they reacted to yeah. it what what work they are doing on the ground and there is mm. the other people who are working with refugees uh, that part of it alexandra uh, she was part of the mediator experiences i had one episode with her she is on the polish ukraine border working with mm. refugees who are coming from ukraine so experiences of mediators in relay in the background of what's happening there so that's going to happen on the 24th of february so the things happening so please participate have the, that but circles part of it definitely the focus area that's the focus area this year yeah and going forward right. so thank you very darren thank you very much lovely con- thank talking you, to you as always and looking forward yeah, to lots of these conversations so of course it's gone on a little longer than i thought i really felt but i i think people i would i still feel people would watch it if people would watch it i think the conversation definitely are useful is productive conversation so